This property has been a summer camp for kids since the late 1800s. I have a degree in civil engineering. I've spent most of my career in California. Moved back here, actually came to camp here as a kid. So I'm very passionate about the place. The improvements to this building was part of a capital campaign to improve the facilities here, most of which were built in the 60s, which included this building here. No one really wanted to tear it down, we wanted to renovate it. And during that process, I came across Passive House and pushed for that. Being certified as a Passive House kind of distinguishes the type of structure you built. It's going above and beyond, super insulated, super airtight, providing for that small heating and cooling load with a really efficient system. You have mechanical ventilation, you're maximizing your solar gain, just smart design. I took the Passive House training course myself. We were able to get an architect on board to design it. Through the relationships through Passive House, we got contractors to help build it. The architect was really on the ball, had done a bunch of Energy Star and Passive House related homes before. The only additional stuff that I went through was some of the indoor air plus related items that might not be more commonly done on the day to day. When we started to look at renovating this building, we realized we were going to have to modify three of the four exterior walls. So right there, you're already essentially almost gutting the whole building. And when you're looking to renovate to that level, Passive House starts to look really attractive. Because in order to do Passive House, you have to redo the thermal envelope of the building. On the walls, we have 14 inches of dense packed cellulose insulation. Ceilings a little bit more with two by sixes that are insulated with 16 inch cavities of insulation. On the floor, we have about 12 inches of insulation. So the more money you put into the envelope and making the structure more efficient, you can now downsize the mechanicals. They can do that because it's so airtight, they don't need as big a system. We have a small heat pump, it's reversible. It's just a point source, very simple, very cost effective. There's an ERV here, and basically it's exhausting out from kind of pollutant or moisture zones, bathroom and kitchen and then supplying fresh air into the living spaces. We also have a fire here, which serves as supplemental heat. The fireplace is always a concern. It needs to be totally separate from the building. If you create any negative pressure, you're going to backdraft that fireplace. So it was very important here to make sure that it was getting a fresh air intake and totally separate from the indoor air. We have European passive house grade windows, which are all triple pane. So there is a lot of thermal gain through the windows, which is why we opted for large windows on the south face. All the lighting in the building is LED. I love LEDs, they're instant on, they use very little energy, there's no mercury in them so they're easy to dispose of. We have a solar hot water system with electric backup, so there's no fossil fuels used in this building. We're just using electricity, it makes it easy to upgrade to net zero building with solar panels as we get more information about how much electricity we use over the year. The Lodge at Silver Lake, best overall envelope, final HERS rating 32. We have a lot of kids coming through here. It's great to be seen as a leader in environmental stewardship. You know, it's something that's part of our core values and the young people that come through this building, hopefully they will see this type of technology and really take it home with them. And the next time they build a home or renovate a home or they go on to be engineers or build bigger things, you know, you can see this works commercially, this works for my home and it's a beautiful project and uh, it's very efficient.